Welcome back, everybody. My name is Audacity Flips, and today we're going to be talking about the best places to source products for reselling. Now, most people think when reselling, they mainly think of two places, especially depending on where you're at. I am in Florida, and these two are the most pre uh, prevalent reselling kind of stores, secondhand stores, whatever you want to call them, and that is Goodwill and Salvation Army. Now, some of you guys might have other ones in your local area that you have a chain of, but now as much as you can find, you know, things in these places, you can find some hidden gems, you can find some diamonds in the rough. It is absolutely possible and I do it all the time. But where you are going to find your highest profit margin items, the most amount of items is little thrift stores. And most of the time thrift stores that don't even advertise on Google or Facebook or anything, they're just little holes in the wall. Sometimes they're connected to churches. Those I find to be some of the best because most of the time they're not, they don't have some Facebook page. They don't have some web page or something like that. So do yourself a favor Next time you're out, next time you're thrifting, look at every single plaza. You probably pass 20 plazas throughout your day, especially when you're thrifting. Do yourself a favor and look in those plazas because I cannot tell you how many of these small little thrift stores that I have found that have come up with absolute gold because there's resellers that aren't there. So when you go to Goodwill, you get a Salvation Army, those places have been picked through and picked through and picked through. Now, of course, there's always, always, always going to be stuff people miss, especially if you have the experience like I do or you've taken the course. You know, there is so many places people miss constantly and there's always, always, always meat on the bone and money to be made even at the most picked through locations. But the problem with this is if you go to Goodwill, know that there's probably a reseller there with you currently, or there was 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, whatever. When you go to these smaller thrift stores, I've been to places that they've had things that are now on clearance on markdown because they can't get rid of them for so long and they're really profitable items. So that just lets me know that there has been no resellers to come through here in quite some time. And it's truthfully that simple. You go to these places and you just find you, you really have to dig sometimes, especially with a, with a lot of the, uh, the church related ones, those ones tend to have a lot of junk, but there can be gold in those places. You just have to look for it. But I've always found some of the most items in these hole in the wall places. It's, it's good if they're on Google, your local thrift stores that are, that are on Google that you can find. Those are good, right? You can make some money with those and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Probably better than your bigger, your Goodwill, your Salvation Army, but not as good as the ones that don't advertise. Because when people are trying to sell on eBay or whatever, sell on Facebook Marketplace, however, however you're hustling, what they do is they look up on their phones. They look up thrift stores near me, thrift locations, you know, secondhand stores. And if they don't come up on there, that gives you a significantly higher opportunity to swoop in, to get those deals and to make that money because people don't see them, right? Mo we're in the tech, we're in the technology age right now. We're in an age where people are too lazy, right? They don't really go drive around. They don't really look around. They don't really use kind of word of mouth, right? I've went to thrift stores, local thrift stores to me and asked if they know of any other thrift stores like, Oh yeah, there's one here. There's one here. There's one here, but people don't ask. And then I go and it's like, uh, you know, behind a church or something very hard to, to even find in the first place. And they're only open for a couple hours, like before, or after, you know, service. So I hit those places up on certain days and they seem to be a gold mine because all the old people, they don't seem to care. They don't seem to care about the stuff that I want. And most of it is older folk. They don't care about the, uh, just a few weeks ago, I picked up like four Game Boy Colors because they were just there. They were in a bin and I got them all. They all worked. They, the, the old lady said they, she didn't know if they worked or not, but they all worked. I got the whole bin for 20 bucks. It, it came with a, I think there was a couple extra cases or something like that in there, but $20 I paid $5 a piece for those Game Boys. And she said that they've been there for at least a month. That is insane. 
if that was at Goodwill, if there was Game Boy Colors for $5 a piece, those would have been gone within the first five minutes of them being put out. You see, you got to go to these places. You got to hustle a little bit, you know, you got to ask around. You got to do some digging. You, in your areas, just just drive, just drive in every plaza, look in there, you know, see if there's any sort of, you know, thrift store, secondhand store, anything like that in those areas, because that is where you're going to find some of the best product. And if you get on a really good, like name to name basis with these people, I've developed personal connections with these people because how often I go in there. So now whenever they get toys in, whenever they get games in certain clothes, what do they do? They call me, skip the middleman entirely. They call me and they say, hey, uh, I just had somebody donate a bunch of board games. You interested? Oh yeah, could you send me a picture and, and I'll let you know if it's something I'm interested in. Boom, sends me a picture. You can have all these for 30 bucks. You know, I, I find one that's worth like 20 and there's, you know, 30 other games and I'm like, oh, we're going to go pick them all up. That's happening so many times with video games with clothes. Uh, somebody donated a bunch of Jordans one time to one of my local stores, literally like 15 pairs of Jordans. And I was like, I couldn't believe it, but I guess it was uh, a girlfriend that broke up with her boyfriend and she, she took all of her shoes or, or whatever the case was, but it was some sort of messy breakup and she basically just donated all the shoes and uh, for 15 Jordans, they were all size 11, I believe, various types, uh, Air Force Ones, um, 13s, like they were, you know, they were all over the place, but for 15 pairs of Jordans and all in pretty good condition, I paid $120, I believe, for all of them. Just, just because he's like, ah, I don't want them, you know, the messy girlfriend, boyfriend situation. He's like, I don't want to deal with it. He's like, yeah, here you go. You know, you can have these for 120. I don't care. They're going to be at my house. I'm not going to have anybody knocking on my door <laughs> asking for the shoes back. I mean, there's just so much money to be made in the space, but you really have to kind of go for it, right? You really kind of have to, you know, put yourself out there a little bit. Like I said, ask these places, hey, do you know of any other thrift stores around here? And then sometimes you get to generic, oh, there's a Goodwill or, oh, we have another location here. But sometimes you will get, oh, yeah, there's a little thrift store here. There's a little thrift store here. There's a church thrift store there. You never no. So next time you're out, keep your eyes peeled for these smaller thrift stores. Try to develop a connection with these people. Let them know that you're in the business of reselling and that anytime they get in any sort of uh, whatever you're looking for, maybe you're looking for camera equipment or you're looking for vintage shoes, whatever, let them know. And they might give you a call ahead of time. Obviously, I'd try to make sure the thrift store's prices are in check, right? You don't want somebody calling you, giving you eBay prices, trying to sell them to you. But if they have reasonable prices, let them know ahead of time. Say, hey, give me a call. Give me a shout. Whenever you have stuff, they'd be more than happy to come look at it. So hopefully this video has helped you make some extra money. Hopefully this is something that you guys are going to work on because I'm telling you right now, there's no way every single one of you watching this has been doing that and it can truthfully be an absolute gold mine. And honestly, it's pretty fun, right? Just driving around, looking for these places and every thrift store you go in, it's a total gamble. You have no idea what's in there. It's pretty exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you guys want to check out my course, link down below of 12 years of ebay experience and i will absolutely arm you to the gills with all the knowledge you need to be making some money on ebay thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one